Hello, Richard here, and this will be a fairly quick video about this, Gunk Ultra. And I thought I'd put up like a little mini review of this because I've just switched to using this as a degreaser. And I couldn't really find anywhere online where I could find anyone sort of showing how it works. There was plenty of reviews on Amazon that said it was good stuff. Some people said it wasn't, you know, hard to gauge. So anyway, I thought I'd do a little video just to give you a real life demonstration of me using it on a couple of projects so you can judge for yourself what it's like. Now, I've used a lot of different degreasers over the years. My go-to one was always Gunk Original in the orange cans, which is fine. It's a great degreaser, but I always find it stinks a bit, you know. Um, it'll stink out the workshop and anything you use it on. I don't know if it's changed in recent years, but I didn't really fancy using that because I'm in a fairly, you know, domestic enclosed environment here. What appealed to me with this one was that it's uh, odour-free, pretty much. But anyway, I've got a couple of things to test it on. One is this old record woodworking vice that I'm restoring. And this is for another project, which I've got a video series about, and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description if you're interested in that. That's restoring an old woodworking bench and a couple of these vices. And the other one is this, which is an ab wood four and a half inch milling vice. Now this is sort of a bit of oil and sawdust, a little bit of grease, and this is more engineering oil, whey oil. It's a little bit of a heavier project, but even so, these are still fairly light degreasing projects. So I'm only really reviewing this with respect to fairly light work. I can't tell you whether this would degrease an horrible old engine. <laughs> um, maybe it would, but th say this just gives you an idea on some fairly light stuff. Anyway, these are the victims, so let's see how it does. All right, so I've got myself a tub, a waterproof tub that I'm just gonna put some of this in. Got some PPE. That's always worth reading the label on these things, and this does say to wear eye protection and gloves. To be honest, I usually wear eye protection when doing this anyway, because things just have a tendency to flick up when you're brushing something. So um, regardless of what you're doing, you know, just stick a pair of uh, safety glasses on and um, just saves you getting your eyes stung at the minimum. Um, so I'm just gonna slosh a bit of this into the bottom there. And then we'll have a go on the old woodworking vice and see how that comes up. So I probably won't need too much of this. I'll probably do, to be honest. We'll give that a go. All right, let's give it a little bit of a scrub then. I've got a little short bristle brush here. So we'll just agitate some of this on there and see how it does. See how much kind of gunge comes off. And they do say in the instructions to put it on and leave it for a couple of minutes to soak. So we'll just get everything kind of agitated around a little bit. Work it in there a bit and uh, we'll leave it for a few minutes and then we'll give it a rinse and see how it does. Well, that's been about five minutes. Uh, gloves are back on. Got me brush. So I'll give it a quick scrub over, put it to one side, and then we'll have a go with the milling vice and see how that does. Right, well, hopefully you can see from the state of that, it looks like it's taking quite a lot of grease off the old uh, woodworking vice. What we'll do now is we'll get the milling vice in there and give that a bit of a clean. Uh, secondhand bath water, I'm afraid, for that. But uh, let's see how that does. This is a bit, of, a bit more of a test because this is some really old caked in machine oil and stuff and you can see just like bits of swarf there's all kinds of bits of swarf and stuff stuck on there so we'll see if it can actually penetrate into that and again it's second hand this liquid now so that's even more of a test but we'll give it a soak see how it does right that's been about five minutes that's been soaking for so i'll just give it one last little agitate I must admit, this one's taking a little bit more scrubbing. This brush could do it have been a bit stiffer, actually. It's a bit of a soft brush for this. Be better off getting with this and like just cutting uh, 10 millimeters or uh, 3 eighths of an inch off the end, make it a bit stiffer. Because uh, a lot of this is really ingrained swarf and machine oil, as I said. Uh, it seems to be doing right, though. There was a big heap of swarf around here. I don't know if you remember. Um, there's a big lump of junk there. That's all come off. So I'll give it a final scrub, give it a rinse, and then we can come back for the verdict. All right, so how did we do then? Let's have a look at a few bits. Uh, if we look at this part from the uh, from the woodworking vise, you can see that's pretty clean though. There's just a bit of surface rust showing on that, but that's actually done quite a good job of cleaning the grease off that. And it doesn't feel tacky at all, it doesn't feel greasy. It feels really sort of uh, really clean. Uh, this bar, the, uh, the quick release bar, that was really quite grotty. That had a big load of... Uh, sort of grease and sawdust on it, and that came up really nicely. So that cleaned up really easily, that one. Uh, we'll just have a look at the lead screw for the woodworking vise. 
again, it's cleaned up quite nicely. There's no sort of grease and slime on the surface. Uh, some stuff has kind of stuck to the threads a little bit. I don't know how well you can see that. So if you look in here, you can see there is some sort of some crud left in there. Uh, that didn't get shifted. If I had a stiffer brush, I reckon that would have come off. But as it says in the instructions, sometimes you've got to give it two goes anyway. This had quite a lot of dirt and grease around the base of these, uh, these bars, these rods. That's cleaned up really well, and all the dirt's gone from in here. There was quite a lot of grease in there from the spring. So hopefully you can see in here it's all, uh, it's all nice and clean now. So that's done a good job. Moving over to the machine vise. Now, there was a really nasty lump of sort of greasy, swarfy debris <laughs> around this bit. Uh, that got lifted off okay. And on the whole, it's actually done a very good job on this. As I say, the surface, it doesn't feel greasy anymore. There's no sort of dirt left on there, no grease and oil. Um, now, there is some impacted dirt still right in the edges of this sort of bottom of the dovetail down through here. But oh, it's no surprise. I mean, this thing, you know, this thing's obviously been used a lot. It's got a lot of sort of machine oil and swarf on it. And the swarf gets impacted in as well, where it never gets cleaned in there, really. So, yeah, overall, that's done a pretty good job as well. Uh, we've got the lead screw here. There is some dirt still left in the threads, but not very much. I mean, it's done a really quite a nice job on cleaning that up. And finally, this part, I can't see any sort of real dirt and gunge left on there other than just the sort of surface rust. So yeah, happy with that. Right, so the verdict is, yeah, it's pretty good stuff, actually. Um, one of the things I like about it is it's low odour. It smells about as much as screen wash, I suppose. It's got quite a sort of quite a light odour to it, unlike the uh, Gunk Original, which is quite strong. It seems pretty powerful. It's cleaned up all these parts with, well, you saw how much I used, you know, maybe so much. It's cleaned these up quite well. It does say on the instructions on there that uh, for heavy stuff, you might need to give it two goes. So um, a stiffer brush and another coat on this would get rid of the last of the little sort of ingrained bits of uh, grease and swarf. But on the whole, it's worked really well. Bear in mind with this, it does say in the instructions, you can't use it with a parts washer for whatever reason, although you can soak parts in in a dip. The other thing is you can't use it on cellulose or lacquered finishes, and you can't use it on aluminium or chrome. So just bear that in mind. I'll put a link to this in the description if you want to try it out yourself. I'll put an Amazon link below. I'm not affiliated with Gunk. I get no money from them. This is just purely, you know, done off my own back. Just to sort of, as a mini review, just to help you out if you're wondering what this stuff's like. But as I say, works well for me. And yes, I would definitely use it again.